I'm Corbin. I'm from our ML compilers team at AMD. Um, this is work that we've been doing uh, to, to do generate performance analysis in ML compilers uh, that are based in MLIR. Um, so the background for this is uh, there are um, machine learning compilers and frameworks that use MLIR uh, and JIT style GPU kernels uh, pretty extensively. Um, and this poses a challenge from a compiler based performance analysis uh, perspective. You can use dynamic binary information tools, um, but those are often fairly coarse grained um, and it's difficult to get kind of higher level source level information. You can uh, you have debug information, but you kind of lose um, you know, information you have in the compiler uh, that you can make use of. Um, and so if you, you instrument in the, in the compiler, you can trace specific uh, GPU kernel defects uh, that lead to bottlenecks through the various lowering phases, um, which are usually pretty tedious um, if you kind of don't have tools that are um, that kind of baked into the, uh, the pipeline. Um, and so this we found very useful in, um, in instrumenting both and getting information from the program source, but at higher level data operations. Um, so the overarching goal of this project was to develop a set of lightweight and customizable um, open source compiler based passes uh, and um, get them kind of up and running in some, some popular ML compilers. Uh, and for those of you that, that are kind of uh, don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, instrumentation in this case is injecting analysis code uh, into performance critical sections of the GPU code uh, through a compiler pass to get um, various types of information. Um, so what are the types of challenges you run into when you're uh, working on an MLIR based uh, GPU fr or frameworks that use GPUs? Um, you know, on the GPU, uh, instrumentation is not always as straightforward as doing it on, in the CPU. Uh, you generate data on the GPU through um, analysis code, and you somehow have to move that data back to the CPU. Um, there are kind of host call type things, which is how uh, AMD implements printf, um, and that, that is a substantial overhead, and you really don't want to use that for anything um, heavyweight. Uh, and so in kind of our example case, uh, a small attention model uh, generated 10-ish gigabytes of data. So anything in production needs to be able to, um, to work through this. Um, LVM separates, uh, at least in our case, GPU and CPU code, and so those are separated into, into separate modules, and so you have to have some way to, to work between them. Um, and then usually you're, you want to write your instrumentation functions in some sort of Clang-based tool chain. So you want to write um, C++ instrumentation functions and then insert them into an MLIR-based framework that really has no reason to, to have the Clang driver and runtimes um, along the way. Um, and so uh, in addition to that, when you're instrumenting in uh, an MLIR pipeline, especially in the ones that we work with, you only see the GPU kernels. So there's really no uh, CPU host code for you to, um, to add calls to. So all you get is just the, the MLIR-based um, GPU kernel. Um, so uh, the, the kind of popular frameworks in which we, we typically work in, uh, in our use cases, are Triton, Erie, um, and a little bit of PyTorch, uh, but that's kind of a, a work in progress. Um, one of the things that is, is challenging working in these frameworks is uh, the GPU code is, is kind of intentionally hidden from the user. This is supposed to be kind of an easy to use thing um, and you kind of don't have access to uh, where the actual like um, code gen is done. Um, and so if you're doing performance analysis and tuning, um, you want to know kind of what these decisions are being made uh, behind the scenes for you and figure out uh, you know, if something has gone wrong. And that perspective changes who you are. So if you're uh, like a hardware architect and you're designing memory systems, you want to know what the memory access patterns of uh, a particular model are like. Um, if you're a, a compiler developer, you want to look at data, data movement, see if you can overlap uh, compute and um, communication, pipelining opportunities, uh, intra-kernel timing. Uh, and then if you're a user, you really want to know, you want to get some kind of immediate feedback correlated up to various uh, objects in the pipeline. So you want to know both source level, but also can you give me uh, information about uh, a particular like object. So in, um, in Triton, one of those things is like a tensor object. Can you tell me which tensor object at which source code line had um, some memory coalescing or bank conflicts or, or something related to uh, the, the performance bottlenecks? Um, so we do our instrumentation through a combination of LVM plugins, analysis, uh, kind of specific passes, and Clang generated kernels. Um, we insert them through this kind of uh, optimized module phase, which is a, a kind of popular part of MLIR um, frameworks. And so uh, this is kind of common. Um, you'll see that you can kind of insert this in multiple places uh, among different frameworks. Um, kind of the details of how the instrumentation pass works uh, is it it clones the kernel and adds uh, an extra kernel argument, which allows, uh, that's kind of where the, uh, the data transfer takes place. So you can 
um, use that to pass information uh, from the GPU back to uh, the CPU and you'll get, um, uh, there's really no other way, um, you know, the, the way that the, the module is compiled, that's really where you're going to, um, to have the, the best experience moving data from the GPU that you, you generate back to the CPU for um, either writing to disk or having some sort of analysis. Um, and then uh, we set up this kind of host, uh, this, this device side buffer on the GPU in which the, the GPU uh, writes into, and this is all set up through the LLVM pass where you, you have this device side buffer that the, the GPU waves write into uh, and you have some user defined set of space uh, if you find that the, the buffer is full, uh, you have a, a, a signal in the GPU that, that um, signals a host thread to empty the buffer, uh, and then you can continue on your way so that you um, can kind of fill up this device buffer, uh, and then uh, when it gets full kind of periodically, uh, it stops. And so this is, this is separate from like a host call where you have to stop everything, um, and it's very disruptive. Um, so an example case, uh, we this is, uh, like a memory access pattern trace. So this is a fairly common instrumentation thing. You get like a heat map of uh, how the, the loads and stores are um, accessing the, the virtual memory addresses. So the way that this works, um, it adds a compiler pass at every global load and store. Uh, and this is a C++ code, uh, C++ analysis code that is compiled and then inserted into a, um, an MLIR framework that has no client dependencies. So this is kind of cool that we can get C++ code and then insert it into various places um, in which you want to do analysis. So uh, we calculate uh, uh, vir the virtual address and then we're able to get metadata like source location, um, MLIR level objects, timestamps, um, and then hardware specific things like uh, the wave or, or the CU or the chiplet in which um, the, the data was generated. Um, and so this is kind of an example. So this is just a, like a flash tension model in which you've, you've got um, you know, all sorts of interesting data that you can associate with the memory addresses. You can um, get kind of hardware specific things and then correlate it back both to source and um, there's kind of a, a separate part to this that allows you to get um, kind of higher level object information. Uh, so the, the current status is we've got um, instrumentation passes for, for intra-kernel timing, uh, memory access patterns is kind of the most mature, um, and then kind of various, very basic, uh, you know, performance bottlenecks, memory coalescing, bank conflicts, and, um, and then the, the nice thing is this is uh, kind of customizable, so you can take an existing one and, and um, you know, expand it to what you want. Uh, the, the infrastructure has been upstreamed, and we're, we're kind of getting to the point where uh, the infrastructure, but then we're also trying to, to um, move it into some of the existing tools, um, and then we've got uh, some open source um, passes that are available, and um, if folks are interested in using it, they can kind of take it and, and play around with it. That's my time. Thank you, Corbin.